and now I've left just enough that I can buff that with a rasp as I need to. It's so easy to touch up with the rasp, I don't like taking it clear to the line with the grinder and then finding out, oops, I needed it a little bit wider. So I go just outside of that line, the last little touching up is the rasp. All right, we're ready to nail this number two shoe on. Now, I don't believe I mentioned on the other foot as I was nailing, but I'm using a Delta nail, number five city head. And that's my choice. E heads work well, six cities work well, about any brand of nail works well. Again, just whatever you've got in the truck will work on this shoe. Occasionally, as you're nailing, just as that happened there, with this round pilot hole that we drilled, this nail will twist as it's going through the shoe. And to me, that drives me nuts. I, I gotta have all my nail heads lined up. So if you just take the claws of the hammer and you can rotate, I mean, you can twist that nail all around because it's not in her foot yet. And just get that lined up with your crease and then finish your nailing. Hold on, Grace. The fly's bothering you a little, huh? You want that foot back for a moment? Okay, come on, Gracie, let's finish. like the way that one's going. It's coming out too soon. It's into an old nail hole. So we'll change the angle a little bit. That's much better. Same thing again now. With your crimps block, just set the nail heads in. No special tool required. Okay, now before I pick this foot up and start clinching, you can see how by fitting it out of the truck, marking it with the, um, with the magic marker and then grinding down the edges, you can see how much closer this foot fits. I was concerned with the first shoe of her moving around and stepping on all that extra shoe sticking out. This way you don't have to be concerned about that. So neither way is necessarily better than the other. It's just all personal preference. Same thing for the nailing. The clinching is identical. And then here's where I just do that final little touch up on that shoe with the rasp. Turn her to the other side.
last little touch up of the shoe. And all that leaves us with now is filling in the nail holes. All of the horses I shoe, I like to take wood putty and fill in the old nail holes. I find it makes for a much healthier foot. It prevents all the bacteria from getting down inside the hoof wall. Really knocks down the incidence of white line disease in my barns. And of course it helps to control the moisture of the foot a whole lot better. You don't either lose excessive moisture through the holes from the inside of the foot or gain excessive moisture. Now in this case, she's got a dark foot. This is just a water-based wood putty. It's Elmer's wood putty you know, from any home store. You can purchase it. And then I put a little, for a dark foot like this, I put a little bit of black color in the tempura fingerprint, uh, not fingerprint, finger paint powders. I just mix that in with it. And it just makes it look a little nicer. And then the other thing that I consider important is putting on a hoof dressing. This particular hoof dressing is tough stuff. About probably 25 years ago now, I did my master's thesis using tough stuff. The effects that it had on horses feet and it's been too long ago. I don't know the exact your know, numbers anymore, but it made a significant difference on the overall hoof quality. So once again, I consider it important and it goes on every horse that I shoe. And that's got Miss Grace ready to go. Take a whole bunch of little lesson kids out for rides. Jim, thank you very much. I appreciate the use of your place and your horses. Yeah, thank you.